Okay. Not liking this memory. Correction. Not liking this body. Something was very wrong here. My legs ached, my back was sore, my hips felt all tottery, and my vision was a mess of blurs. But despite that, I could smell the most amazing collection of scents. I wasn't exactly sure what they were, but I could smell them. I could also hear voices talking quite clearly. With a groan, my host rose and trotted, well, walked, at least, down a cloudy hall. I'm glad that you're all right, Applejack. An accident like that. It's terrifying that something that can strike right out of the blue. A buck said in consolatory tones. The smell of mare, apples, bed linen, and buck filled my nose. Well, we're not completely convinced it was an accident, horse. Applesnack's low, serious voice perked my curiosity. Elevators don't generally fall on their own. I... I hadn't thought of that. I hope that the Ministry of Morale is taking a hard look at that probability. Horse said in concerned tones. Well, in light of that, maybe... He trailed off and silence fell for a moment. What is it, Horse? I can tell you've got some idea stuck in your noggin. Applejack said tiredly. My host rose up and... I smelled her scent of mare, a bed occupied for too long, and healing bandages. Something reached out to rub my host's ears. Wait, what kind of ears were those? They felt furry. There's been a lot of concern about high-profile ponies being at risk from zebra assassins. We've been exploring some possibilities, running a few experiments. We found ways to place an organic brain inside a mechanical robotic body. I've heard about that, Applejack said sourly. I can honestly say that's one of the most ghoulish things I could ever heard. Unconventional, perhaps, Horse admitted, sounding like he wasn't too happy with the practice either. We only use convicted ponies from Hightower, and only after removing most of their memories and personality. The brain, preserved in gel, just acts as a processor. Cut to the chase, horse. What does all this have to do with Applejack? Applesnack demanded. Horse cleared his throat and said delicately, Well, you see, we've also been developing a canine model. In fact, it's almost ready for production, given that there's a far more canine brain samples available. We're just looking for a subject for our production prototype. An awkward silence ensued. Finally, Applejack muttered, Horse, if I could get out of this bed, I'd buck your head clean off your shoulders. I know what you're thinking. Applejack swore and groaned. My host whined, licking her leg and tasting lotion. Well, I'm not under doctor's orders to stay in bed. Applesnack growled. Horse spoke quickly. Please. Listen to me. I know that you love her, but face facts. Winona is old. She's an exceptional dog, intelligent, loyal, and well-trained. Better than a lot of ponies, honestly. And, he continued in a calmer tone. As you said, you think some pony is trying to kill you. And I agree. Let me give Winona a fresh, new body. Onyx and Glass are both sure they can preserve both her mind and her personality, and she'll be able to keep your foals and grand foals just as safe as you. (laughs) Yeah, as if that'll happen anytime soon, Applejack said in a slightly sharp manner. Applesnack coughed awkwardly. The mare stroked my host's ear and rubbed between her aching shoulders. Despite her words, I could tell from her tone that she was pensive. Just consider my offer. I'll be moving on to the security and combat prototypes one way or another. I just wanted to give you a chance. I know Winona would want to keep you safe. There was another moment of silence. Well, I hope you feel better soon. Yeah, you too, Mr. Horse. Applejack muttered in worry. 
Her ears swiveled as Horace trotted away. A moment later, the door closed. My host gave a worried whine in the back of her throat and nudged Applejack's hoof with her muzzle. I can't believe he'd propose something like that while you're still recovering. Applesnack muttered darkly. I didn't stop being the minister mayor just because I fell down an elevator shaft. Applejack replied. He means well. Horse is the only one of a lot of them that didn't look like he was glad I laid up. Heck, even Brayburn seemed glad I'd be out for a while. There was a sigh. Can you help Winnie up? Apple Snack, smelling faintly of sweat and musk and anger, trotted behind Winona and boosted her onto the bed. My canine host gave a happy bark and wiggled up next to the orange mare. Applejack sighed softly, running her hoof through my host's fur. You're a good girl, Winona. Yes, you are. You've always been a good little helper. There was silence as Applejack just stroked my old body. What do you think? She finally asked. I don't know. I usually leave all this technology stuff to you, Applejack. The buck said softly. I just know that, if we are right, I don't want you at risk again. And Horse was right. She is getting old. Applejack gave a soft sigh and a sniff. Taint fair. Angel Bunny don't seem any older at all. <laughs> yeah. But who knows what chemicals and potions that little monster's taken. Don't let Fluttershy hear you say that. Applejack said with another sniff. You're a good girl, Winnie. A good girl, you hear? My host lifted her muzzle and licked away salty tears. Sand dogs dig. Sand dogs make... Uh, help. Rover muttered as he pulled out an old wooden box filled with some more rolls of paper. Dogs make things that matter. You helped make them? I asked, curious. The sand dogs didn't strike me as the most engineering inclined people. Then again, they had bionic parts, so who was that a judge? Ponies have horns, he muttered. Dogs have thumbs. He wagged the appendage at me for a moment with a grin before pulling out another piece of paper. Thumb is better, pony. Ponies think of things to make, but dogs make them. Heavy, sweaty, dangerous work, but we do it. I supposed that was true. Golden Blood really wanted to help you, didn't he? Rover growled, but then sighed. Golden Pony was impossible. Wanted things as they was. Want home as once was. Dog's home and pony home. He try make dog town new home, but Pony City is not dog home. Dogs have only one home. Why is that? Isn't home wherever you live? I asked. He snorted in distaste, muttering to himself for a bit as he pulled out a few more papers and then finally seemed to settle on one. Home is home. Dogs have one home. That home is gone. Golden Pony say he fix home, if could, get rid of poison, make apologies, but he not. Over time, he forgot about us, till the end. Even Golden Pony used dogs. He growled faintly in a tone of finality. Ponies is not nice. I felt a bit stung at that. I'm sorry you feel that way, I said, looking down at my hooves. He pointed a finger to me. Pony is using dogs now, too. Pony wants information from dogs. Tunnels only dogs know. He snorted a glob of snot dripping from his old gray muzzle for a moment before he wiped it off on the rag, the sleeve of his jacket. But, he conceded, Pony is at least nicer about it than most ponies. He shook out one more paper and grinned. Ah, yes. This will get Pony across city. Yes, yes. He spread out the wrinkled, faded map. Green line to factory, through factory, into blue line, out, big pony school, safest path. Factory. I blinked at that, shocked. Down here? Then again, if there was power, why not? I wondered if, if those factories still worked. It might be possible to use them to make things to help the wasteland. Rover nodded absently as he traced a claw along the route of the paper and tapped a square. Hmm. Many old factories underground. 
make gun, bomb, magic, robot. Many, many things. Most quiet. Some broken. He marked a route in chalk and then folded the paper up. Do not stay long. Radiation and enervation is strong down below, pony. Thanks, Rover, I said as I slipped the map into my saddlebags. He looked particularly grouchy about helping me. If I may ask, do you know what happened in Riverside? DJ Pony said the village disappeared and then reappeared? Ha! Huh. Day after Pony came, dogs go to village with scrap and salvage. Village not trust dogs. Dogs not trust ponies. Almost shoot. Then flying monsters come. Half cat, half bat, half scorpion. Dogs dig tunnels, and ponies follow. He twisted his lips as he crossed his arms, waving a finger at me. Fifi asked we save them. So pony, not thank dog for it. He grumbled, refusing to meet my smile. That was a more literal example of trade saving the wasteland than I had ever expected, but it was no less welcome for that. Well, I'll have to thank her then, I replied. I owe you, Rover. I hope that someday I can find a way to get you back your home. All it would take was finding six ponies that could be friends. How hard could that be? He gave a soft sigh and waved me away. As I left, I heard Rover mutter softly to himself, Just like Golden Pony.